Good Monday evening to you. Hope you had a good weekend. The weather over the weekend. What else is new? It was kind of chilly. It's this way every weekend, it seems, so far this uh, spring season. And uh, we'll have another turn towards cooler weather during the upcoming weekend, Easter weekend. But uh, in the meantime, things started to look up today. We had some raindrops to contend with, but temperatures were a lot better than over the weekend. We had a high of 45 on Saturday and 49 on Sunday, but we were above average by a couple of degrees today with a high of 60. Now, before factoring in today's numbers, before today we were running 2.8 degrees below average when you factor in the highs and the lows uh, through the 10th day of the month. We'll see what the new numbers are once uh, we've uh, put today's numbers into the old calculator. But yeah, we're still, you know, running below average. And I suspect April is going to end up going into the record books as a cooler than average month, considering the kind of pattern that we have coming up over the next week to 10 days. As of the climate uh, report issued by the National Weather Service at about 5.15 this afternoon, the Youngstown Warren Airport at that point had picked up 0.21 inches of rain since midnight, bringing the total to 1.04 for the month. Now, it's rain uh, just about every day of this month. Where you see some of these zeros, that means there was no rain or a trace of rain. We've had measurable precipitation, more than a trace, on 8 of 11 days so far in April, but uh, we've had at least a trace now for almost two weeks straight. It's interesting, it's rained just about every day of this month, but at the airport we're still running a deficit. 0.33 inches shy of average through the first 11 days of the month, because rainfall totals have overall been pretty light, at least at the airport. I talked last week about how our southeastern viewing area has had more rain so far this month than the northwestern part of our viewing area. Today, the northwestern part of our viewing area had some of the higher totals. 24-hour rainfall totals from rain gauges, a little over a quarter of an inch. Newton Falls to Mesopotamia, 0.4, even close to half an inch up towards the Ashtabula line. Then the middle of our viewing area has seen lower totals and amounts a little bit heavier uh, in the southeastern corner of Columbiana, down towards Calcutta and Wellsville and East Liverpool as well. All right, so as of this recording, it is 7.03 p.m., and we're in a little bit of a lull. We actually had a decent amount of lightning and thunder earlier on today, uh, especially out towards the I-71 corridor, Mansfield up to Cleveland. Uh, we did not have a lot in our viewing area. I can't rule out a, a stray clap of thunder tonight, but most of this will be shower activity, and just some light rain will come and go as we uh, head through the next several hours. No severe weather here locally, but tornado watches are out from Arkansas back through southeastern Oklahoma, extreme northwestern or northeastern uh, Texas. A couple of tornado warnings have already occurred in parts of Arkansas this evening. That's where the threat for severe weather will be highest uh, for the rest of today and into tonight. Arkansas especially, but southeastern Oklahoma, parts of northeast Texas, and even expanding out towards the lower Ohio River Valley as well. Now that's for the rest of today and into tonight. Tomorrow's severe weather outlook Featuring an enhanced risk, uh, that's a, if you think of it as a 3 on a, a 1 to 5 scale, kind of right in the middle of the scale, it's it's definitely a day to stay weather aware out in kind of traditional tornado alley. Eastern uh, Nebraska down into parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas again, parts of Arkansas again, Missouri again, kind of similar territories today, just a bigger area of real estate uh, with the risk of severe weather tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, this starts to shift off to the east, but it'll be another severe weather uh a day for some of the same areas, so Memphis and Little Rock and northeastern Texas again, but also the threat expands into places such as Indianapolis, Cincinnati, maybe Dayton. Around here, I don't think severe weather is all that likely Wednesday and into Wednesday night, but could there be a stray shower or a storm? Yes, but I think the chances are going to be higher off to our west. And by the time the cold front itself moves through Thursday morning, it'll be coming through at an unfavorable time of the day for severe weather here locally. We may, may not even have much thunder and lightning with that Thursday morning as the cold front pushes through. Tonight, though, uh, showers coming and going for the next several hours, but the timing on this pretty good if you have outdoor plans on Tuesday, even just heading off to work and school in the morning. The raindrops should be gone by about daybreak. And in fact, the sun will come out fairly quickly tomorrow morning. It's going to be a nice day tomorrow. Uh, some clouds in the mix uh, from south to north as we go into the afternoon. But hey, a, this is a winter tomorrow. Real nice day. Upper 60s to around 70. We'll get into the mid-70s on Wednesday as this warm front pushes off to the north and east. And the atmosphere will be a little bit unstable Wednesday afternoon. So yeah, could there be a shower or a storm? Yes. But again, I think the chances of something strong or severe are higher out towards Dayton, Cincinnati, Indianapolis towards the end of Wednesday and into early Wednesday night. Here's our cold front Thursday morning. Again, this could come through with a band of gusty showers. 
I don't think severe weather is all that likely at this point with this because it's coming through early in the day, unfavorable time, so the overall instability in the atmosphere will be at kind of a minimum as our cold front pushes through Thursday morning. All right, we had some snowflakes in parts of the area this weekend, especially yesterday morning. Yesterday was also the, the date of the 30-year average, uh, last measurable snowfall of the spring season, but that's just a 30-year average. Of course, there's a lot of variance from year to year. In last year and in 2020, we had measurable snow on May the 9th, both days. The latest date in the last 30 years of measurable snowfall was in 2016. We had measurable snowfall on May the 15th. All our other dates here are primarily in April. You'll notice it's kind of interesting. This goes back 30 years, all the way back to the early 90s, but there's no dates from the 1990s in this on this list. Uh, our last snowfall of the spring season in the 90s occurred pretty early. It generally was late March, very early April, but it's been more and more common in the 2000s, the 2010s, and into the 2020s um, to have these late season snowfall events, kind of going along with the idea that seasonal creep is becoming kind of a real thing, I think, in our area. Summer lasting longer into the fall season, winter, if you will, lasting longer into the spring season. Those are trends that we've definitely seen over the last couple of decades. All right, so a nice warm up over the next couple of days, but the pattern in the longer range, I, I said earlier on Twitter, this is just woof, not great. Uh, Easter Sunday is going to be chilly. I think it'll probably be dry and fairly sunny, but eight degrees cooler than average for a daytime high on Sunday. Beyond that, yeah, lots of 50s next week, maybe even a day or two next week. You know, these numbers could be a little conservative. Maybe during the middle of next week, we might even have a day where we struggle to get out of the 40s. There is some modeling that would suggest that uh, snow may be a threat here and there, middle of next week. Way too early to think or, or to speculate as to whether that's uh, reality or not. But there are some models that hint at that. And snow or no, it's not a warm pattern at all next week. And uh, while there may be some respite from the cold as we go towards the last week of the month, I don't see any sort of big ridge pattern in the eastern U.S. through the end of April. And so an 80 degree day does not seem very likely at all through the end of the month. Uh, the closest we may come is Wednesday. I've got a high of what, 74 in the forecast for Wednesday. That may be as close as we come to 80 anytime real soon. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm battling another cold tonight, so that's why maybe my voice sounds a little bit not great tonight. Second cold in a month for me. You know, we dropped the masks and just instantly everybody got sick. <laughs> no, I've had my second cold in less than a month. Not, not real fun. Anyway, thanks for watching tonight. I'll see you back here on Tuesday, and uh, hang in there if you're following me on Facebook. We're still working on trying to get my Facebook page, uh, trying to get access to that. It's been a few weeks now, and uh, we're still we're still working on it.